peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. These are the words given to us by the one whose birth we celebrate this day. This day, we remember the proclamations of the angels. This day, we remember the miraculous star in the heavens. This day, we remember the rejoicing and awe of shepherds and kings. Yes, this day, we remember the miracles that occurred on that holy night so long ago. And we rejoice in the assurance that what was true then is true now. Today, in this very hour, joy to the world, the Lord is come. There is peace in the world tonight. There is peace in the world tonight Love's the most radiant light Joy to the world, the Lord is come There has never been such a sight There is peace in the world tonight Love's most radiant light The promise of old That the prophets foretold There is peace in the world in darkness have seen a great light on those living in the land of the shadow of death a light has dawned for unto us a child is born unto us a son is given and the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called wonderful counselor mighty God everlasting father Prince of Peace of Jesus. 
This is a timeless story of ancient promises made and promises kept. Promises that began three millennia before the miracle of Bethlehem. These promises by the Lord God Jehovah were given to a man named Abram. As for me, this is my covenant with you. You will be the father of many nations. No longer will you be called Abram. Your name will be Abraham. For I have made you a father of many nations. I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies. And through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. Yes, the promise was made, and the promise was a long time in coming. There were 14 generations in all from Abraham to King David, 14 from David to the exile to Babylon, and 14 from the exile to the Christ. His advent should not have come as a surprise. We had plenty of time to prepare the way. same country shepherds abiding in the field keeping watch over their flocks by night and lo the angel of the Lord came upon them and the glory of the Lord shone round about them and they were sore afraid and the angel said unto them fear not for behold I bring you good tidings of great joy which shall be to all people for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior which is Christ the Lord and this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger.
And so in the perfection of the father's time, it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all in the world should be taxed. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea under the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. Yes, it was an angel from the heavenly chorus that brought the message of peace to a war-torn world. A world that was divided more by conquest than by culture. 
by might regardless of right, by the tyranny of tyrants regardless of covenants. Indeed, war was the common human experience. And yet listen, and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Hear the bells ring, hear the angels sing, glory, hallelujah, to the newborn King. Peace on earth, goodwill to men, Jesus is born in a Bethlehem. Hear the bells ring, hear the angels sing, glory, hallelujah, to the newborn King. Peace on earth, goodwill to men, Jesus is born. Shepherds on the hill, the angels in the sky, the baby in the manger, a mother's lullaby. Wise men from the east, the star that shines so bright, remind us of the joy of this blessed holy night. Hear the bells ring, hear the angels sing, glory, hallelujah, to the newborn King. Peace on earth, goodwill to men, Jesus is born. Gather at the manger, come and see the baby king. Watch the shepherds running as the hosts of angels sing. We all can go rejoicing on this most holy night. Christ has come among us, life's most radiant light. Hear the bells ring, hear the angels sing. mystery and joy of the Incarnation was not limited to the small village of Bethlehem. The signs and wonders of the birth of God's Son stretched into the very heavens where a new and mysterious star appeared. Although the news first came to lowly shepherds, it would take the skill and education of royalty to read the message God had placed in the evening sky. Through the star, God led them to the place where His Son was. When they arrived, they came into the presence of heavenly royalty, and they bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and incense and myrrh. Accustomed to their greatness, their life a royal feast, they leave their kingdom comfort for a star in the east. The journey seems so endless, what promise does it bring? Though the road is rough and rugged, it leads them to their king. The kings came calling. of gold they bring him frankincense and myrrh 
aware of where they were. In an audience with the Savior, they worship and adore. This infant child of glory will reign forevermore. The kings came calling after following the star. On their knees falling, despite who they are. The wise and regal, they bring their offering. The kings came calling. The kings came calling, the kings came calling, the kings came calling, the kings came calling, after following the star, on their knees falling, despite Mary and Joseph's world had been turned upside down. Nothing had happened the way they had planned. Angels and shepherds and kings and stars all appeared so unexpectedly upon the landscape of their lives. The journey God was embarking on through them would lead them to places they would never have imagined. There would be struggle and sacrifice, surrender and responsibility. But this holy night had already taught them that peace, the kind of peace that their child brought, was not dependent upon the absence of conflict. It was defined by the presence of God. And they rejoiced in the knowledge that peace had come to the world in the person of Jesus Christ, their tiny child, God's only son, Jesus, Prince of Peace. There is peace in the world tonight Love's most radiant light Joy to the world, the light has come There has never been such a sight There is peace in the world tonight Love's the most radiant light The promise of old that the prophets foretold There is peace in the world
Jesus, we live in a world where peace seems to elude us, where fighting and disagreement are far more familiar than understanding and acceptance, a world that seems so divided and so confused. I'm thankful today that peace is not the absence of conflict. Peace is your presence in our lives. We need your peace. We need your presence. We need you, Jesus. The hope of peace came to us in a most miraculous way on that holy night in the little town of Bethlehem. God did hear the prayers of his people. Through the life and ministry of his son, he redefined love and peace forever. Peace is the presence of God. In a world ravaged by the evil of war, we must never lose sight of the promise of peace that comes to us from heaven. The Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. As the bells of Christmas toll this Christmas, may we rejoice in the promise. May we know the peace of God that transcends all understanding. And may we be an instrument of his peace. May we always remember that peace has a prince and he is here right now among us. There is peace in the world tonight.
Thank you so much, choir, for reminding us of the gift that Jesus gave us. Thank you, Phil, for leading them, for leading us. You know, Christmas has become so much about gifts. And gifts are good and gifts are fun. I read the other day that uh, the average home has $300 in unused gift cards. And between 2005 and 2011, in the United States, there were $41 billion in unused gift cards. I read that and I thought, that's stupid. <laughs> that's free money. Who wouldn't take that? What? But it said what happens is people get the gift and they just put it away and they say, I'll use it later. And they discard it, they lose it, they forget about it. It expires. And we heard today about a gift that has been extended to us. A gift of peace. And we were reminded peace is not just the absence of conflict. Peace, as the Bible speaks of it, is, is really it's about wholeness. Peace isn't just the end of strife. Peace is peace from the guilt of our sin. Peace is peace from the oppression of our sin. Peace is peace from the consequence of our sin. Peace is our union. It is our fellowship with God. And Paul, in 2 Corinthians, so beautifully summarizes what Christmas is all about. 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Paul says this, verse 9. He says, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich... Yet for your sake he became poor, so that you by his poverty might become rich. That's the Christmas story, isn't it? That Jesus, King of kings and Lord of lords, the creator of the world, God himself emptied himself and he took on the form of flesh. And there as an infant he was born in Bethlehem, and as one of us, he came and he lived a sinless life. Everything he did was in perfect obedience to the Father. Never once did he sin. Never once was an impure motive driving him. Everything he did was in perfect submission to God. And he died on a cross. And in doing so, he bore the weight of our sin. He took all that strife, all that brokenness that sin creates so that we could have his peace. He took on our poverty and he gave us the immense treasure of his riches. That's what Christmas is about. And this morning the choir has so beautifully and profoundly presented to us a reminder that Jesus came to bring us peace. The gift has been extended. The question though is whether we will accept it or whether we'll just go through another Christmas season and hear about the gift of Jesus and sing about the gift of Jesus and just put it away and say, I'll get to it later. But the Bible reminds us that later doesn't always come. And we may discard it. We may forget about it. And the opportunity may never come to accept this gift. But the opportunity is here today. And I would be remiss if we did not have a time of commitment this morning. As we've heard about the gift Jesus has given us through his life and his death. If you're here this morning and you've never accepted that gift Jesus has offered, there is no better way to celebrate Christmas than by putting your faith in the one who came to live and to die for you. But maybe you're here this morning and you have accepted that gift but you remember that you're reminded you, you don't always accept the peace. Sometimes you still live in that guilt. Sometimes you still give yourself over to sin. And this morning you want to recommit yourself to accept the peace and to enjoy and celebrate the peace that Jesus has come to bring us. I'm going to pray and then we're going to sing a song of commitment. If you're here this morning... And God is leading you to commit to Him in some way. Let me invite you, if you're here and you've never put your faith, I would love to talk with you about how you can know that peace 
that Jesus promises us. God leads you in some other way. I'd love to talk with you about that. However God leads, I pray you would follow. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, Lord, we thank you so much for the gift that Jesus has brought us. Lord, may we never take that gift for granted. May we never discard that gift. May we never fail to celebrate that gift. Lord, if there's anyone here this morning who does not know peace, their life is marked by the strife that sin and brokenness brings with it. Their life only knows the strife of trying to make all our own decisions and trusting in our own wisdom. Father, I pray this morning that they would accept that peace that you offer. Father, I pray for all of us that we would do what Jesus tells us to do in the Sermon on the Mount, that we would be peacemakers, that we would take the news of this peace and bring it to the world around us. Father, may we not lose sight of that promise of peace, of that gift of peace this season. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand and let's sing.